Oh, living God, you are more than able. You are able to do all things. And so we thank you and we pray that even now tonight, even as David understood at the end of his life that you were with him every step of the way, may we experience your presence with us this day. At this time, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please have a seat. And online, we're so glad you're with us and on campus here. It's so good to be together. Maybe you're gathering with us here in person or online. Maybe you're gathering with us and it's been a hard day. Maybe just getting here, um, I'm going to check. Whatever's going on with the headphones is super loud and I can hear it. So they'll just turn that down a little bit. Perfect. Thank you. And can we thank all of our volunteers who capture this? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, they're, they're capturing this and then sending it to all kinds of people all over the country, all over the world. A couple people I sent notes to encourage to be here tonight who said, I'll be online. So those of you are online, I'm thinking about you because I know you're on there. Uh, but m maybe you've had a hard day. And just turning on the TV or getting on your computer or your phone or showing up here was like all the strength you had just to get here. And God delights in that. Maybe it's been a hard day. Maybe you've had a hard week where like the last six, seven days it's been rough. Maybe you've had a hard month and maybe you've had a hard year. Well, King David had some hard decades. He'd gone through a lot of hard stuff. And if you read the story of his life, in, 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 the, in the books of Samuel, you discover that he went through a lot of stuff, some by his own doing. Have you ever noticed that sometimes our own problems are because we did dumb things? You ever notice that? And sometimes it's just because we live in the world, and sometimes it's because other people are on the attack and they're coming against us. But if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Samuel chapter 22. I won't read the whole song, but I shared as we first began the service. In chapter 23 of 2 Samuel, that's when David dies. It's, the end, it's near the end of his life. He's been through a lot, and at the very end of his life, he sings. He keeps singing. The, the young shepherd boy who sang in the wilderness is now an old, old man. You know what he's still doing? Still singing. And this whole year, we're looking at some of these interesting songs in the Bible. So we read these words in 2 Samuel 22, beginning in verse 1. David sang to the Lord the words of this song. When the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. So this is a song. This is what he declares before the Lord. And see if you might feel this in your own heart. Maybe you've experienced God's deliverance in his presence. Or maybe you're saying, one day I hope I can sing this song. Because right now it's tough and I'm not feeling the relief. Maybe you long to be able to sing this. Maybe you can sing this. And either way, listen with your heart as I read these words. Here's David's song near the end of his life. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. That's a good start, right? My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. My shield, the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge, and my savior. From violent people, you save me. Some of you have experienced that. Some of you are under attack right now. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise and have been saved from my enemies. I called, I've been saved from my enemies. The waves of death swirled around me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. It's like this flood coming against me. He said, I remember that. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I called out to my God. And from his temple, listen to these words, he heard my voice. My cry came to his ears. The God of the universe he says, God, you heard me. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. I couldn't do it, but God, you could. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Did you hear that? He rescued me because God delighted in me. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? Someone say amen. amen. It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. And I'm going to finish with verse 34. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. 
He causes me to stand on the heights. He makes me secure and stable. Look at this picture of these deer. On the edge, of the, you, can, you can't see how steep that is. I'll give you one more picture. Okay? <laughs> Have you ever seen video of these deer that climb that stuff and they're not nervous? We'd, we'd, be, we'd be terrified. But they're, they're stable. They're secure. And David said, God, in the midst of all of the craziness of this world, God, you gave me security, strong feet to stand strong. So just some insights from this passage. And, and I want you in your, in your heart and your mind as I, as I share a few insights, just think about where has God delivered you? Where has he saved you? Where has he rescued you in the past? It could have been from an addiction. It could have been from a person. It could have been from a circumstance. It could have been from yourself. Think about that. And also, where do you need to be delivered? Where do you need to be reminded tonight that God is the one who delivers? And so every song, and each time we, we gather on, on, on these nights of worship, we kind of think through these different songs in the Bible. Every song has a setting. This one is after a long season of battles, struggles, and problems. David had been at war almost his entire life. Enemy after enemy. Before he even became king. When God said he was going to be king, when God had prepared him to be king, the, the king at that time, Saul, wanted to kill him. Saul was literally throwing spears, trying to pin him to the wall. So the king is attacking David before David becomes the king. And the problems just seem to multiply. And, and now here we are. It's after a long, it's after decades of battles. Some of you tonight are just tired. You're like, I, I don't have another battle that I can handle. I'm weary. I'm tired. You need to hear what God has to say. Because David's looking back and he's saying, God, through all that, you were with me, you saved me, you delivered me. You gave me stability on the high places even when I didn't think I had it. Every song has a setting. And this setting is after someone's gone through a long, hard time. Also, every song has a singer. Every song has a singer. And this song was first sung by David, but it can be sung by you also. And there's more to the song in, in 2 Samuel 22. Read more of it later. We just read part of it. But every song has a singer. David's lifting up his heartfelt praise to God. You know what he's saying? He's saying, God, you were with me. God, you saved me. Did you notice as he was singing that song, he was really clear, I couldn't do it. I couldn't bail myself. I couldn't dig myself out. I couldn't, I couldn't get myself beyond this. God, it was you who delivered me. Do you recognize in the hard times the only one who's going to ultimately deliver you is God Almighty through Jesus? Do you understand that? And when you get delivered, it wasn't your cleverness and it wasn't your power. It was the God of heaven who delivers, who is watching over you more closely than you know. Some of you tonight feel like I'm in the pits, I'm in a struggle, I'm in a, in a battle. I'm here tonight because I'm just looking for something to hold on to. And what you don't realize is in the midst of whatever you're in, God's holding you in his hands. And his eyes are on you. He hasn't left you. He hasn't forsaken you because he never leaves us. He never forsakes us. Every song has a singer and, si and David is just declaring his confidence in God. Every song has a central message. Modern songs and ancient songs. If you take any song and you really listen to it and really distill it down, there's something that it's saying. There's a central message. The message is clear and detailed recognition of God's delivering power and goodness. If you were to take this whole song of David, he's saying, God delivers and God is good. God delivers and God is good. Say that with me. God delivers and God is good. Do you believe that? Yes. Say it again. God delivers and God is good. When? Good all the time. But when's he going to deliver you? Right now. Right now. Well, you're guessing, now you're wishing, you're hoping. We don't know. <laughs> David had times, you read some of the Psalms, he's going, God, save me, deliver me. To be honest, God, it feels like I don't even know where you are, but, but I know you're there, but I don't feel your presence. I wish I could stand here and tell you that just say the right prayer, and by 10 o'clock tonight, everything's better. I wish I could tell you that, but I would be lying. It, it might, might be better. You might make it through by 10 o'clock tonight. It might be 10 o'clock tomorrow night. If you believe, but there's no guarantee that by today it's all gone, the, that, that the pain in your back is gone. 
that the person who's tormenting you is going to be nice to you. God doesn't promise the timing. He promises to be with you. And he promises there will be a day where you'll look back and say, God, you delivered me. In the meantime, hold on to him because your deliverance is with you. Your deliverance is God. He's your deliverer. He's your deliverance. He's with you. Is he going to make everything better by tomorrow? Maybe, maybe not. But hold on to him no matter what you face, no matter what you go through. He delivers and he's good. God is with you. Songs can move a heart. There's something about a song. Some people like poetry, some people like stories, but songs through all generations seem to capture people's hearts. And so let me invite you to let God touch your heart through this song, this song of David from 2 Samuel chapter 22. It's an easy one to remember, 2 Samuel chapter 22. This beautiful song of God's deliverance. Let this move your heart. Would you recognize God's presence delivering you even in the hard times? When you're down, when you're struggling, will you say, God, I know you are present. I know you are here. It's hard. It's painful. I don't see the end of the road. It could be soon. It could be later. But God, I know you're here. Recognize his presence with you, and that will move your heart. That will give you hope. You want to have your heart moved? There's something about praising God for his mighty power. God, you are powerful. God, you are glorious. God, you are the deliverer. Declare that to him. We're going to have a chance tonight to express our praise for how God's delivered us. I want to suggest that if you stop and really think about it, you could probably come up with 10 different ways that God's delivered you. If you really think about it, if you really quiet your heart and think, Lord, how have you delivered me? One day in heaven when we see Jesus face to face, he's going to show us a thousand ways he delivered us and we didn't even know. When I was a kid in junior high, I did so many things that I should have died. I did so many dumb things, so many dangerous things. Before I was a Christian, before anyone in my family was a Christian, I think God's going to look back and say, see that one right there when you did that thing and you flipped off that thing and you jumped off that and you did that and you made that choice and you went over here? And God's going to kind of show me a little reel of highlights. And I'm going to see angels in the presence of Jesus. But there are times we can recognize what he did. Tonight you're going to get a chance just to think, how has God delivered me? How has he saved me? If you're a Christian, the greatest deliverance on the cross and his life laid down. But there's other ways, day by day by day, that God delivers. And let that move your heart. Let that move your soul. The greatest songs can transform a life. The greatest songs can move you to transformation. And this this song that David sings near the end of his life, probably through cracked elderly lips, just probably with with, with a voice that couldn't sing. He couldn't sing like when he was 13 or 15 or 18. But he was still singing to God. And so how can it transform your life? If you understand the message of this song of David, here's what should happen. You live with confidence. I know who's on the throne. I know who's in charge. The world looks confusing. Yes. 2024 is going to be a rough year uh, in lots of ways in our society. I suspect so. God's on the throne. Amen? Live with confidence in God's power and work. Second, live with awareness that God's past work will give you confidence in his future deliverance. When you think tonight about the different ways God has delivered you, then look at what you're going through right now or what a loved one's going through and say, God, will you again deliver? His past past faithfulness gives us hope for future faithfulness. And then live with hope. Hope in what God promises. That he's with you, that he loves you. That he's preparing a place for you. But right now in this world, he's ready to bless you. He's ready to be near you. He's ready to surprise you with his goodness. And so each time we walk through one of these songs, I give an invitation to think deeply. So I want to ask you just to think for a moment. And you might, you might close your eyes and bow your head. You might keep your eyes open, whatever works for you. But I want you to think about these two questions. Here's the first one. How has God delivered you in the past? How has God delivered you? How has he set you free? How has he protected you? How has he been your refuge? And have you praised him with passion and confidence? Has his deliverance led you to praise him? And if it hasn't, tonight you're going to get a chance. We're not done singing yet. You're going to get a chance to praise him for his deliverance. And here's the second question. Where do you need God to save you now? Right now, where do you need the saving power of the living God? I don't know where you need it. 
It could be financial turmoil where you're saying, I'm going under. God, save me. It could be relational troubles. God, I can't fix this. Save me. It could be emotional fears and anxieties that are paralyzing so many people these days and say, God, set me free from my anxiety, from my fear. Where do you need God's saving power? And finally, an invitation to pray honestly. Now I'd ask that you would just quiet your heart and just pray to God. Say, God, thank you that you are the deliverer. Just tell him that in your heart. Thank you that you deliver. Thank you for the times you have delivered and saved me on the cross and a thousand other times. And then pray and say, God, thank you for how you will save me. Thank you for how you will show up and surprise me with your presence and your power and your grace. So I'm going to invite the worship team to come and join me here. And they're going to lead us in a song called Defender. And this song is is an expression of who God is, but that we trust Him. So just in your heart right now, would you just say, God, thank you for the ways that you've defended me, the ways that you've protected me, the ways that you've watched over me, the ways that you've put your arms around me. God, you are my defender. You are my Savior. You are my rock and my refuge, my mighty tower. As the team leads us through this song, let it be far more than a song. Let it be the declaration of your heart. Do you ever wonder, uh, please feel free to be seated, and we're going to continue worshiping with communion. Do you ever wonder why certain things sort of catch on and stick with people and strike people? Um, one thing that's always struck me is this little poem and you probably, some are familiar, met me new for a couple people, but it's called Footsteps. And the basic idea is that there's someone looking back at their life and there's these footsteps with them going along and every so often the, it goes to one set of footsteps and the person says, you know, God, why in those tough times did you leave me? It's just my footsteps. And God says, you know, those aren't your footsteps, those are mine and those times I carried you. And that song reminds us that the God we gather to worship watches over us even when we don't know it. And that song about God being our defender. We have no idea how he's protected us. We get glimpses. We get moments. And we're going to reflect on that tonight. We're going to have a chance to respond in in, in a very specific way to how God has delivered us. But as we come to the table, this is one of the most uh, powerful experiences for followers of Jesus. And that's because it's in this place that we remember what Jesus did for us long before we knew him. 2,000 years ago, long before you were born, long before you put your faith in Jesus. He broke the bread. He poured out the cup, pointing to the cross that he would bear, reminding us that he would take the punishment for our sins. In the book of Isaiah, this great prophet, hundreds of years before Jesus walked on this earth, prophesying, pointing to the coming Messiah, He writes about the one who would save us. He writes about Jesus. Doesn't use his name, but he points to a picture of what he would do on the cross. We read these words in Isaiah 53, beginning in verse 4. Surely he took up our pain. He bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And the punishment that brought us peace was on Him. And by His wounds, we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on Him the iniquity of us all. All of our sins laid on Jesus. That's a defender. That's a deliverer. That's why he's our mighty tower, our fortress, and our hope. Hundreds hundreds of years later, after God left the glory of heaven and Jesus came among us, the divine one, Emmanuel, God with us, he was sitting at a table 
with his disciples. There was bread on the table. There were cups of wine. And he used those as a picture, as a symbol. Some of you might have wondered when you came in tonight, why didn't they give us those little plastic communion sets that we do on nights of worship? Uh, because tonight we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, we've got tables in different places along the sides and in the back of the worship center here that have bread and they have cups to partake of. If you still like the little kits or you want the gluten-free bread that's in there, you can take those on the table too. But there's also bread that you can actually take and, and you know, take a piece and partake in a different way instead of the little wafer. So if you want to partake at the table, you can take a little cup and a piece of bread or you can use one of those kits either way. If you're at home, we're so glad you're with us. You're part of this family. And we'd encourage you right now to get some crackers and juice or some wine and bread, whatever you have around, and just get that and come back and join us and hold those elements in your hand and prepare when I dismiss everyone at the table to partake during that time with us. So in Luke chapter 22, we read of Jesus at the table with his disciples. And after taking the cup, Jesus gave thanks and he said, take this. Divide it among you. For I tell you that you will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread. And he gave thanks. And he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. He gave it to them saying, This is my body given for you. When you do this, Jesus said, Remember me. In the same way, even as the bread was a reminder, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. And the simple bread on the table, Jesus said, remember my body broken for you. He hadn't gone to the cross yet. He was pointing to what would happen shortly. And when they looked back, they would go, oh, I get it. In the cup, he reminded them his blood would be poured out. The forgiveness of sins, the payment for our wrongs that he bore on the cross. And so in a moment when you go to the table, when you hold the bread, when you partake of it, when you hold the cup, when you partake of it, remember body of Jesus. Remember the blood of Jesus. If you're gathered with, with us online or here on campus and you are a follower of Jesus and you're from another church, this is the Lord's table. We invite you to partake with us. If you're not yet a follower of Jesus and you're online or you're here on campus, if you're not yet a follower of Jesus, we'd encourage you to refrain from partaking because it doesn't really mean anything yet to you, but we would encourage you to watch what's going on to listen to the music. And, and maybe this would be the day you would say, Jesus, may your broken body and your shed blood, may they be the payment for my sins. Because he's already paid the price. We just need to receive the gift. If that's you, maybe this would be the moment you call out to him and ask him to cleanse you and to save you. As we prepare to come to the tables, we remember that Jesus is with us in the hard times. David looked back and saw how God was with him through all he'd gone through. When we come to communion, we remember that Jesus is with us now. I hope you recognize his presence as you hold the bread, as you take the cup, as you partake. Say, Jesus, you're with me now in this moment. When we come to this table, we remember that Jesus will be with us through faith in him every day of our lives. You will never be alone. He will never forsake you. No matter what you're going through, no matter how, how hard it might seem, He is there. His eyes upon you and His hands are upon you. And when we come to this table, we remember that we will be with Him forever. If you've come to the cross and received His gift of salvation through His death and resurrection, you belong to Him. Heaven is your home. And this is just the beginning. And so just a moment, we'll invite you, when you're ready, as the worship team sings this song, In Christ Alone. What a great song, In Christ Alone. When we take the bread, we drink the cup, it's in Christ alone. He paid the price. So I want to pray. And then when you're ready, 
I'd invite you to head to the tables. You can partake right there at the table. You can bring your back to your seat. You can be on your own or meet with a couple of people and pray together and partake. You can come to the front and kneel across the front and, and hold the elements and pray and then partake when you're ready. So I'm not going to give you instructions when it's time to partake. Just now, go to the tables when you're ready. Partake of them there, here, where you're seated. When your heart's ready, partake and remember Jesus. Lord Jesus, we come to the table because you've prepared it. Yes, Jesus, human hands have prepared this bread and this cup just as hands did back at the first Lord's Supper. But Jesus, you have set the table by your choice when you left the glory of heaven, when you died on the cross, and when you rose again. We remember you. We celebrate you, and we meet you in this time. When you're ready, come to the tables. And if you can't physically, if you can't get up and go to the tables, if that's not going to work for you, just raise your hand in the worship center. Someone will come right to you and bring the elements to you. Let's partake together. When you're ready, go to the tables and partake.